Okay, welcome to another short video. I'm going to be going through question six of the uh, May 2018 AS Physics for AQA. Uh, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are, question six. A student connects four lamps, <coughs> A, B, C, and D, in the circuit shown in figure six. The battery has an EMF of nine volts and no negligible internal resistance. Okay. Uh, 6.1. Table 1 shows the operating conditions for the lamps when they are at their normal brightness. So you've got the operating voltage for lamps A and C, 6 volts and 6 watts, and you've got um, for B and D, 3.5 volts and 4.1 watts. So you, you, we know the operating voltage and the power. The, uh, the student observes that two of the lamps are at their normal brightness. Assume that any changes in resistance of the lamps are negligible. Uh, determine which two lamps are at their normal brightness. Uh, use calculations to support your answer. Right, four marks. A lot of marks available. Um, so, what have we got to work with? How am I supposed to know if this thing's at its uh, optimal power um, or its optimal brightness? Is it going to be receiving enough current, enough voltage, basically, is the question, right? Um, because uh, to be at their normal brightness, they need to be con able to convert electrical energy into light energy. And that electrical energy is being delivered by charges of a certain voltage. So really the question is about, are they getting the right amount of power? So I need to look at... I need to look at... Um, I need to work out, let's have a little look. I know that you've got nine volts across these two. That's what I know, okay? I don't know the voltage across here though. So what I could really do with knowing is the resistances of A and B, C and D. If I knew the resistances, then I could calculate the current flowing through them, and then I could have a go at working out the power in them. From the information I've got, and the fact that it says that the resistances don't change, right? if this is what it's supposed to operate at, at this power, I can work backwards and find the resistance. So the formula for electrical power is voltage times current, but a sneaky little substitution of Ohm's law, V equals IR, and I can replace I with V over R. So this goes in for that, and you get power equals V squared over R. Now, I have the power and I have the voltage. I can find the resistance of these things, and then that should give me an opportunity to work out uh, whether they're getting the uh, optimal current and voltage. Right, so let's do for A and C. So for A and C... Um, let me rearrange this for R. So um, R will equal um, resistance will equal uh, V squared over P. So I need to do 6 squared over 6. So that's going to be 6 ohms. Um, so uh, resistance of bulbs A and C uh, put the symbol for ohms there it's 6 ohms that's pretty handy to know ok it's as though I've added another thing to my table let's work out the resistance for B and D Three point five squared over 4.1 OK, 3.5 squared divided by 4.1, 2.987 basically rounds to 3. Right, so <clears throat> now I know the resistances of these uh, things, these, uh, resist these bulbs, sorry. I can add those resistances onto this diagram. So we have a 6 ohm resistor a 3 ohm resistor, um, sorry bulb, and that goes for A and C and for B and D, right? So, since we have 9 volts over C and D, how will the, um, 
how will the uh, voltage be shared right by this potential divider which is how it's going to operate um, so let me have a little reminder how do we do potential dividers again so it is the resistance of the thing I'm interested in over the total resistance multiplied by the voltage input right so we have for a let's try and work out the voltage across a okay let's try and work out this voltage here what's that going to be so it's going to be 6 over the total resistance 6 plus 3 uh, multiplied by the voltage input which is 9 okay so um, it is 6 over 9 times 9 which is going to be 6 over 9 times 9 it's going to be 6 so we're going to get 6 volts here and if you really want to, you can go through and try it out and sub, but you'll find that this will also be 3 volts, right? So I know that um, it's in parallel. I've got 9 volts across either branch, but I've also got um, 6 volts across C, 6 volts across A, 3 volts across uh, D, and 3 volts across B. Right. So, in the circuit, you have a bulb, you have another bulb, so bulb a and bulb uh, was it B yep bulb A and bulb B right and across bulb A we have 6 volts and 3 volts respectively so let's have a look bulb A is at 6 volts right so it will have the right amount of current flowing through it to be at the right power bulb B is at 3 volts it should be at 3.5 so um, only bulbs A and C, A and C will be at the uh, up at the normal brightness. Okay. Right. So let's carry on. student connects another lamp E in the circuit as shown in figure 7. Lamp E is identical to lamps A and C. Right. So a tip I will always uh, suggest is <clears throat> annotate your diagrams. Right. So I'm going to add all the information I already know. A is 6 ohms. B is 3 ohms. C is 6 ohms. D is 3 ohms. And E is identical to A and C, so that will also be 6 ohms. Right, explain what the student will observe regarding the, the brightness of the lamps. Refer to potential differences across lamp E in your answer. Okay, so this question, as far as I'm concerned, is something trying to get you to think about potential difference uh, in general and uh, potential dividers. So I've um, actually made a, um, made a um, simulation of this using PHET. Right, let's have a look. So here is a simulation of the circuit. Right, here it is running finally. And um, I have set the resistances of these bulbs to 6 ohms and 3 ohms respectively. And what we can do is we can check. Right, the volt the um, cell is set to nine volts. Nine volts. It's minus because it's the wrong way around, but you know, minor point. Nine volts. What happens if I check the voltage across this bulb? It's going to be six. I hope six volts. Nine volts across both. Three volts across this one, and the same for the bottom two as well. This will be six volts and three volts. Now let's take a a bulb place it here right set its uh, resistance to 6 okay and connect it up and see what happens okay connected the next bit and you notice that the bulb does not come on so why is that well as the uh, charges leave here with 9 joules of energy, each coulomb, and they go through here, they drop off 6 joules, right? And they also go this way, they drop off 6 joules, they've got 3 joules left each. So the potential energy difference, the potential energy, sorry, of the charges here is 6 
joule, uh, sorry, three joules. And the potential energies of the charges here is three joules as well. So there is no potential energy difference per coulomb of charge either side of this component. And as a result, we have no current flowing. So look, if I put the voltmeter across it, we get a reading of zero volts. Okay, so this is the explanation as to why uh, no current flows through E. Let's go back to our question. Something you won't have access to in the exam, but if you play with it now, uh, you act mind. Right, so what am I going to do? Explain what regard the brightness of the lamps, the other lamps. Right, so I'm going to say there's going to be no change. So no change in the brightness of bulbs. Okay, that'll mark. Okay, come on. Okay, so um, there'll be no change in the brightness of bulbs A and B. This is due to the fact that there is no potential difference across bulb E. Full stop. Um, as a result, no current flows through E and no energy is dissipated. So because bulb E is taking drawing no power, it doesn't affect the, uh, the rest of the components in the circuit. So <coughs> hopefully I've said enough to get the marks. I'll put the mark scheme up and check afterwards. Let's look at the final bit. Lamp B in figure 7 fails. Figure 7. Right, so lamp B, this one, is damaged. Right? So that it no longer conducts. This change does not affect the resistance of the other lamps. Deduce the effect on the current in the battery. Use calculations to support your answer. Right, I'm going to show you on the simulation. what happens. So here we have the simulation. Just about running. My computer's really struggling with this. Right, let's try removing this. Now look, the current at the moment is 2 amps. I'm going to remove it. And the current has reduced. Right, so let's try and understand why that is. Let's also close this and see if it speeds up my computer. Okay, so let's try and understand why that is. What I want to do is I want to take this diagram here and redraw it. I think it's easier to understand if you see it in a more conventional way. So if we remove bulb B, let's just take these branches. Let's do bulb A. That's bulb A. And I'm going to draw bulb E like this. It's no different. It looks different, but it really is the same circuit. And then connect up to bulb D. Okay, so when I see this circuit like this, this would be bulb C, E, and that makes this bulb D. Okay, all I've done is sort of squish this up and around a bit uh, to make it easier for me to see what's going on. Okay, now I know that bulb A is 6 ohms, I know bulb B is 6 ohms, okay, and I know bulb C is 6 ohms bulb D is 3 ohms. Um, I can start thinking about what the resistance would be of this setup. Okay, so um, let's work out the total resistance before and after, right? So in the before scenario, it was 2 9 ohm resistor. It was, this is the after scenario. Let's put this down here. after. The before scenario was um, just the two bulbs. Um, hold on. A bulb, a bulb, like this. Um, a bulb, a bulb. Right, and it was a 6 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor, a 6 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor. Right, so what I can do is calculate the resistance of the before scenario. This is before, and this is after. Right, so in the before scenario, this summed up to 9. nine. This summed up to 9, so I had it's the equivalent of having a 9 ohm resistor in parallel with a 9 ohm resistor. So I shall use the formula for resistors in parallel. 1 over resistance in total will equal 1 over resistor 1 plus 1 over resistor 2. Simplify this down. Gets me to uh, 2 over 9 equals 1 over RT. So invert both sides of the equation. RT over 1 will equal 9 over 2. So the total resistance in the before scenario was 4.5 ohms. 
right now let's have a look at the after scenario okay so we've got six and six that's 12 ohms up here all together right um, down here we've got six so we've got a 1 over 12 plus a 1 over 6 equals 1 over RT this is for resistors in parallel I could do this on my calculator but <clears throat> I prefer to do it like this as 1 over 12 plus 2 over 12 gets 1 over RT so um, this is 3 over 12 equals 1 over RT so I can invert both sides of the equation RT equals 12 over 3 so 12 and that's 4 ohms okay is that right 4 ohms yeah okay that's 4 ohms Oh, and then we've got this other 3 ohm resistor which is in series with this parallel chunk so it's going to be 4 plus 3 gets us a total of 7 ohms right so I can say that <coughs> the uh, effective resistance before was 4.5 ohms rising to 7 ohms when bulb <coughs> B, let's make it really clear, bulb B, <coughs> stops working. Okay, full stop, this lowers the current. All right, and hopefully that will get me all the marks. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe and share, and if someone would like to buy me a faster computer, that would be really nice.